Hello everyone, Chris here. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we're gonna to take a moment to review the small volume nebulizer, SVN, one of the key tools of a respiratory therapist. So let's take a look at some of the equipment here. We're gonna be looking at today the Salter, Salter Labs small volume nebulizer. Just one of many manufacturers that make the disposable small volume nebulizer. So let's take a look at what's inside the packaging of the small volume nebulizer. First off, the nebulizer itself. Here is the Salter Lab nebulizer. If you unscrew that, you can see there's uh, measurements here for your medication. There's actually a baffle that comes out, so be very careful when you're removing the, uh, the lid that the, the baffle does not fall out. It is uh, something that can be dislodged and fall on the ground. Uh, again, it is a screw type, so you just screw the cap onto the small volume nebulizer there. We also have a T that we place there, and this is gonna be for a mouthpiece treatment. So we'll place the T, we'll place the included corrugated tubing, as well as we can place the mouthpiece onto the nebulizer. And there is the setup itself right there, ready. And of course, we also have the corrugated tubing, or excuse me, the uh, oxygen tubing that is uh, packaged with the, uh, the system as well. So taking the, uh, the, the oxygen tubing and connecting it to the small volume nebulizer at the bottom here, get a firm connection so that your nebulizer is connected to a source of gas, either air or oxygen. So once that's done, um, we can go ahead and consider what kind of medication we're gonna be delivering, insert the medication into the small volume nebulizer, which I'll do now to demonstrate that. In this case, we're using albuterol, and we'll have the albuterol bullet here. Open that uh, top of the small volume nebulizer there. Take the bullet of albuterol, and we're going to squirt that into the SVN. As you can see, that goes right down into the cup, and off, you can also see the markings which indicate 3 ml, okay? And uh, that is ready to go. <clears throat> now, we're gonna go ahead and place the, once again, the T piece with the mouthpiece onto the, the neb, and the system is ready to go. So once we've, uh, we've, we've introduced ourselves to the patient and explained the therapy, we're gonna set the flow of the small volume nebulizer to six liters. That's what's recommended for the Salters lab. You'll get a good nebulization. As you can see, the medication being nebulized there and that this treatment will last approximately 10 minutes, which is the, uh, the appropriate length of time for a albuterol treatment. We really wanna go ahead and administer that treatment until the bulk of that medication has been dispensed. And again, that generally is about 10 minutes with the, with this SVN right here. Now, if your patient is unable to do a mouthpiece treatment, uh, patient may be post-op, is very tired, uh, maybe weak patient, that a mask can be utilized. And we can place the mask on the SVN there without the uh, T. We remove the T, as you can see, and then that will fit right on to the SVN and we can give that mass treatment. And it's an efficient way to do it. You place the straps around the patient's head, uh, keep the patient in a high fallow position and allow the treatment to proceed. And that's gonna give them the, al the albuterol medication in about 10 minutes. Now, if we go back and we, we relate what we've just discussed with the simple equipment to our performance checklist or a performance evaluation, of course, which is located in our basic clinical lab book, Let's take a look at the small volume nebulizer therapy uh, checklist. Now, once again, we're gonna verify the physician's order prior to going into the patient's room to make sure what the medications that have been ordered, frequency, and so on. We're gonna also wanna scan the chart for any pertinent information that might um, provide some information on contraindications on why we would not wanna be giving this breathing treatment. We also wanna follow standard precautions before we enter the room. We want to go ahead and see if there's any isolation and use good hand washing uh, and any PPE that would be appropriate. We, we're going to need an oxygen flow meter. We're going to need the small volume nebulizer, as we showed you in the packaging. A peak flow meter is also very, very helpful. And a respirometer, which we could use a, 
uh, a right spirometer that might be helpful as well. Um, we want to prepare the medication in accordance with the physician's order. And nowadays, often we're, we're using barcoding, so we would barcode uh, the patient's uh, 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 wristband and also barcode the medications. Now remember, we want to use the two identifier system. We want to make sure we've identified the proper patient. So we want to look at their name and their date of birth, uh, have them uh, tell you back their date of birth and their name. And again, barcoding is another level of safety if we're using barcoding as well. Now we want to monitor the patient's vi uh, vital signs prior to therapy. We want to look at the heart rate, the respiration, um, breast sounds, um, pulse oximetry and, and a peak flow meter would be very valuable. We could do an FEV1 if we have, for example, a meter to provide that testing. And of course, we want to do a thorough uh, assessment of the patient's work of breathing. Now, we also want to use the appropriate gas here uh, to propel the medication. Um, oftentimes, we'll use air if the patient is a COPD or let's say they might be wearing their two liters of oxygen, we could provide the small volume nebulizer treatment with an air uh, propellant or an air gas to administer the medication. Um, we don't always have to use oxygen, 100% oxygen uh, for these types of treatments. So use your, uh, your, your assessment skills to determine which, uh, which gas source is best. Um, we also wanna coach and encourage the patient throughout uh, the treatment. And of course, uh, certainly when the treatment is concluded, we want to ask the patient to really cough because we really want to move secretions. And uh, that is an appropriate time for the respiratory therapist to really uh, encourage the patient to cough and help them um, produce a very significant cough if at all possible. Um, and of course, once the therapy is done, we're going to go ahead and repeat the vital signs, make sure we're doing the measurements to see that uh, we don't have any adverse uh, side effects. We don't have the heart rate increasing um, uh, by more than 20 beats a minute. And we wanna document thoroughly in the record uh, how the patient uh, uh, tolerated the treatment and how the effects of the treatment were uh, observed. That way the rest of the care team can monitor and see how the therapy is progressing. So again, a mainstay in respiratory therapy in order to deliver medications, the small volume nebulizer is really uh, important and very critical in the, the job of a respiratory therapist. So I hope that was helpful. And until next time, everybody, be well.